Let me ask Chris. What did you get in this table here? Uh, negative 8, negative 1, 0. Okay, so how did he get those numbers? I'll show you how he did one of them. If I plug in negative 1 for x, that's what you do. You plug negative that number in for the x. And then following your order of operations, negative 1 take away 1 is negative 2. And then you raise it to the third power. And what that means is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2, and that's negative 8. You repeat that for the others. And then it says to graph it. It says to graph it. Now, if you guys graph this thing correctly, left 1 down 8, uh, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 8. You should have had a graph that looks something like that. Uh, that's a cubic function. Okay? Now, let's come over here and, well, actually, we have, we have a question here. And so let me ask Nelson, what, what did you get for C? What? One? I, I can't hear you. I hear fragments of words. Oh, one, that's good. You're right. I just didn't hear you, buddy. I was just confused. So he's right. One zero is right here. That's my root. Okay? It's where it touches the x-axis. Okay, hi, honey. I'm, I'm trying to teach. Go, go and grab a seat. Hannah, I'm trying to teach. Be quiet. Later. I want no interruptions. I want to be able to teach right now. I don't worry about you. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one here. So, Nathaniel, what did you get in this column here? Um, four, one, 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 four. Really? I'm, I'm, I think that one of your answers is wrong. I think it's this guy right here. I think it's going to be zero. zero. Oh, okay. But you do it the same way. The only difference is we're squaring it instead of cubing it. So, for instance, if you plugged in three. 3 minus 1 squared would be 2 squared, which is 2 times 2, which is 4, so you get 4. And so if you graph this one, left 1 up 4, 0, 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 3, 4, you should have gotten a parabola, and hopefully that's not a surprise to you because that's a vertex form quadratic equation that we talked about before. All right, now let's move on. So we've got our tables, we've got our graphs. Now, let me ask you guys a question here. Part B. I'll take a volunteer on this one. Why did all of the y values turn out negative here? But over here, we actually had some negative y values. Someone care to tell me why that happened? Yeah? Oh. Oh, did you point out? Yeah. Sorry. Because when you cube a negative, it was like put to positive and then put back to the negative. There you go. The squared was negative and negative. So he's right. So here's the thing. His point is, is that since we're multiplying this negative number an odd number of times, the group of two, like the pairs, will cancel the negative out, right? But that one that's left over, because it's an odd number, will always make it go back to a negative. But when you're doing, um, when you're working with uh, squares or even powers, like let's say I had negative one squared, for instance. Well, you're going to have two of them. And since even numbers always come in pairs. Every pair will cancel out the negative and it always comes out positive. So here's the point. Okay, I see some crinkled brows. So let me make it a little bit simpler. That was the explanation, but here's what I want you to know. When the power is odd, you have negatives. When the x is negative, you have positives. When the y is positive, right? But when your power is even, your outcome is always positive. Uh, that three is still positive. What do you mean? It's squared on A. What's your left? Stop, right, 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 right. Stop, up, that number, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's still positive because you called it negative. Okay, so I'm talking about two different things. The power is odd, therefore the answer is negative. Oh, okay, okay. okay. My, I'm sorry. When you plug in a negative, right? Okay, but if you plug in a positive, it's still positive. Okay, 
Now let's move on. So that's our answer to part B because even powers cancel out negatives. Odd powers don't. There's your answer to part B. All right, let's so we'll take a look at part D. What's the root? So let me ask um, Joanne, what's the root on this one over here on the right? It's the same root as this one, isn't it? Okay, now I want you guys to look at this and compare these two things because something happened here. They both have the same root, don't they? But this one seemed to go through the root from bottom to top. This one seemed to bounce off the root. Any reasons why that might be, you think? Because of the negative thing we just talked about, right? When you have an even power, this thing's trying to get to the negatives. It's trying, it's trying, it's trying, but the square is like, nope, and pushes them all right back up. Makes everything positive, right? This guy. It's trying to be negative. It's trying to be negative. It's like, go ahead. Okay, because cubics keep the negative. So here's what I want you guys to take away from this. And this is our this is our, our first note we're gonna write. I know we haven't written our title yet, but I while it's fresh, I want us to write this because this is kind of a an obscure topic that's not easy to grasp. So I want you guys to write a note for me. So on on your little warm-up, underneath that put A. Let's talk about bounce points, bounce roots, and through roots. And then we'll get then I'll then we'll put our title on at the top after that in a second. But I want to make sure we get this while it's fresh. Here we go. If you have a factor. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter, x minus c. And there is an odd number here. What happens is, is your line goes, yeah, goes through the x-axis. So when you have an odd power on a factor, and that's what helps you find your root, it will go through the x-axis. But whenever you have an even power, <coughs> It never lets it change its sign. It makes sure all those signs stay the same. And so when it gets to that root, right, where it's about ready to cross over and become negative, the even cancels the negatives out and makes it start going back up again. And so it will bounce off the x-axis. And to give you a picture that goes with that, let's say that this is our root. We'll call it C. At the root, if it's odd, it'll go through the root. But if it's an even power at that same root, it will bounce off of the root. Okay? Let's go back to the top of our papers now and put a title, guys. Ready? What are we on here? We are on units five, less than three. And today, our objective. Oh, we are not writing an objective. I'm do that now. I hear a lot of talking. You guys aren't going to ask me to wait whenever I move on, are wait, you? That's the title. Yes, we are. Our objective will be graphing polynomials. Graphing polynomials. Oh, Henry, is that, is that you blubbering over there, bud? Good, good, good battle plan there, Coy. <laughs> I don't feel good, so you don't have to feel good. If you need to take a rest because you're sick, go ahead. I I fully support that. Last time I told you I felt sick. But only if you're really sick. Only if you're really sick. Otherwise, I think I can't buy it. But I believe you. So, here we go. You guys remember how to find y-intercepts? No, I think so. Uh, you're right. All right. So, if you guys forgot, the way that you find a y intercept, the way you find a y intercept is by plugging in the zero for x. Plug, uh, this is one g and plug. Plug in zero for x. Now, I'm going to show my work this one time, but after this, I won't need to do it anymore. 
Because basically what happens to everything? It all goes away except for the... No. Everything with a zero goes away. Except the negative four. Sure. So there's your y-intercept. So from now on, you guys, when you have a polynomial, your y-intercept will always be whatever that number is. So uh, Now, there is an exception to that, okay? Let me tell you what the exception is. So we just what if... What if I'd given you this instead? Like, let's say, um, let's say I gave you this, like y equals x cubed plus 3x. Zero. Then it's zero, right? Because when you plug in zero, everything goes away. So your y-intercept is when it's just a number, okay? But if you have everything with an x just goes away. So in that case, your y-intercept would be zero. What about that three? Well, if you plug in zero, it's three times zero, which is zero. So it goes away. Oh, that's shortcut. Yeah. yeah. So, shortcut is, if you want to find the y-intercept of a polynomial, just take the number at the end. Unless that number at the end has an x on it. If it does, then your y-intercept is zero. Okay? So, there you have it. All right. So, we're, we're, our objective today is to graph polynomials. Those two things that we just started off with are the tools that we're going to use to accomplish the task. You need to know whether you have a bounce point or a through point. You also need to know where's your y-intercept. If you know those two things, you can take all the stuff you've been learning over the past couple lessons, put it together to create a graph. Okay? So now I'm going to give you guys some steps because there's a lot of steps to this process of getting a graph of a polynomial. Um, and I would like you guys to have that as kind of like a reference. Okay? So here we go. I'm on C? Yep. Thank you. So steps for graphing polynomials. Go to the brown box on the table, get a calculator, and let the calculator do the work. No, I'm joking. That's not what we're doing. All right. So here we go. Step one. We're going to start by finding the roots. How do you find the roots? Well, that's where most of our work is at in these problems. This is what makes the problems take so long. Because the first thing we have to do is we need to factor completely. Hey, man. After that, you want to hang out here? Do you have a question or you just want to hang out? Yeah. Um, you're going to factor completely, and then after that, you're going to use the zero product property. That's where you take each piece and set them equal to zero and solve. Ringing a bell? Yeah. Okay. All right. After you have your roots, what you're going to do is you're going to find your y-intercept, which we just talked about, right? Actually, hmm. let's, let's not do that. Next, I think that'll be a little confusing at first. Let's do this. Um, let's say graph your roots. Graph the roots. So whatever we got from step one, you're going to put those dots on the x-axis. Okay. After that, you're going to have to make a decision. Is it a through point or is it a bounce point? Through or bounce. Okay. Well, it depends. Every one will be different. Some of those roots will be through roots, where it just goes through the x-axis. Some will be points where it bounces off the x-axis, and it has everything to do with the power that you see on the factor. All right. The last thing we're going to do is, is we're going to graph the y-intercept. And after that, you should be able to draw your line. So, it's a lengthy process, but there it is. Find your roots, factor it completely, and find the, the roots that way. Then we're going to graph those roots and decide if they go through or bounce off the x-axis. Then we're going to graph our y-intercept, 
we should have enough information to graph this. So I'm going to do an example with you now to kind of bring this to life a little bit. Oh, yeah. I have a correction to correct your pain. Yeah, there we go. The interesting part? Just like go back to like the previous, previous slide. Hello? So, um, let's do an example. So we're going to do this like we always do. I'm going to give you an example, then a guided what? practice, then a student practice. You guys ready? Hmm. Gotta go in the back. Give me a second. No. Give me a second. Girl. Here we go. X to the fourth power minus 16 equals Y. Okay. So we're going to be graphing this polynomial. You guys have the steps, so I'm going to call on you to read those steps, but you got to keep on track with me. All right, so first, Augustine's not here, but David, what do I do first? That is true. Now, if I want to find the roots, Gabby, what do I have to do first? Factor it, right? And so now, let me ask Henry, how do I factor this? X squared. Good. We always start by looking for GCF, but there isn't one. So Henry jumped right into the difference of squares. But you can also wait for other. Okay. All right, now let me ask Kayla. Are we done? Which one's not done yet? Okay. So the x squared minus four can be factored into what? X minus three. Oh, that's not really. Okay, what do we do after we factor, Natalie Carpenter? That's good. We got headphones in our ears, and we're on the phone. So, what do we do next, Natalie Carpenter? That would be a, that would be the expected response for someone with their headphones on, staring at their phone. Um, let's let's try Kiana Warren. Kiana, what would I do next? Zero product part. You gotta know what that means. That means you take every factor and you set them all equal to zero. Oh, oh we do the subtracting and or plus, it, I mean adding. Whoa. Oh, my. <laughs> do it. Don't complain. Ew, ew, do ew, it. What do you mean I'm going too fast? I can't write that. Why not? Because it's just not. I got to be able to read my desk. Yeah, give him a second. Oh, oh, like my handwriting, not pretty. Nope. This is gold. You like how my numbers start big and get smaller? Yeah. Yes. That's because you're running out of space. You're a smart. All right, now. Hang on. I'll wait a little bit. But that's the zero. So that's what Kiana means, whether she knew that or not. This is what Kiana meant when she said do the zero product property, okay? Ready? You're right. Shh. Ready? Ew. <laughs> so, <laughs> minus 4, you get negative 4. What do I do now? Okay, so we have the square root of a negative number. What is that? Uh, no, no. That's imaginary. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show my work up here because I'm running out of space. But here's what we got. Now, second of all, when you solve an equation by square rooting Remember what that? other little thing do you need oh, probably don't remember this it's been a while oh, 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 you get a plus and a minus it's like it's all right too. you're right it is Wait, so now i'm going to take out the negative as a what an i and what's the square root of four two two so i've got plus and minus two i now here's the thing these are not real roots so I don't care. You know, if you see an advance, like if you have something like x squared plus 4, and you, as soon as you get to this step, you can just stop and leave it because you can't graph those. You yeah. can't graph imaginary roots. That's what I was saying. You should have just put an exclamation. You're fine. You could have. 
So I don't mind if you guys stop here, but I just want to remind you this. But if you ever have an eye, that means those aren't real roots. So we're not going to graph those. They don't really exist on the real plane. Okay? The real XY plane. Not a plane. XY. Plane. So I really only have two roots here. I've got two and I've got negative two. All right, so I've completed step one. I factored. There's yes, more? I did zero. But the good news is, yeah, it's still we should, we got some work to do. All right. So Danielle, Danielle, what's step two? Step two is graph. Graph what? The roots. The roots. So what are my roots? X. So let's plot those on there. And that's going to be a circle one. <laughs> you mean a parabola? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now here's the next question we got to ask. What is step three, Javier? What do we do now? We need to know are do these roots go through the x axis? You do? Do you know? If they're not bounces. What do you mean? Let me show you why. You ready? Oh. Let me show you why. Let's go back. Look at these factors. What's the power out here? There's nothing here. What is it? One. What's this one? What's this one? All those powers are odd. Now look at your notes from earlier day. When you have an odd power, does it go through or bounce? Those are through. Okay. Wait. Hold on. Those are throughs. So I want you guys to put a T here for a through. Or you can write through if you want for now, because you probably won't remember what the T means later. I'm just making things up. So it whenever my line touches this root, it's going to actually go through the x-axis. Can we just leave it like that? Yeah. Now if if you had, had something like this, let's say you had let's say we had x minus two times x minus two. Ew. Wouldn't that be x minus two squared? Yeah. That's a bounce. Okay? Well, we might see one of those later today, but for now, they're both through. Now, what is step four? Let me ask Heidi. What is step four? Graph the y-intercept. Nathaniel, yes. what is the y-intercept? The y-intercept is zero. Close. It's the number without an x next to it. Remember how we talked about that? So now I'm going to plot the, a dot on the y-axis at negative 16, okay? So I'm going to make my line small so it fits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I'm going to put a dot there. Okay. What is the last step, step 5, Jonathan? Sure you are. Because he got his headphones in? He's ignoring me? We're good. Let me ask. Well, Leslie's in the potty. Can I, can I just say it? You draw the line. You draw the line. Now, th that, that may be easier said than done. You guys ready? We're always going to start on the root. So everybody put your pencil on the root. Ready? Or not the root, the y-intercept. Start with your pencil on the y-intercept. And then go towards your root. Now, when I get to that root, am I going to bounce down or am I going to go through? We're going to go through. We're We're gonna gonna go through. The and then I'm going to come up here. Oh. Is it, Am I going to bounce back down or am I going to go through? Yeah, We're going to well, go through. And there you go. Now, if you guys actually graph this on Desmos or a graphing calculator, there's, there's a possibility that it might look something like, like this instead. Um, they, they might have a little wiggle, okay? But the but we don't care about the little wiggles. I'm just teaching you guys some really basic skills here. Um, the only way to get those numbers is by plugging in a whole bunch of dots and finding everything, and we're not going to do that, okay? But all I want you guys to do is can you find your roots and know if it's a through or bounce? Can you find your y-intercept and then make the graph fit it as best you can? A bounce, a bounce would happen if you have an even power on your factor. All right, so let's go ahead and do, so that's your teacher example. Now we're going to do a guided practice where you guys get to do most of the work, and I'll just check you. So here we go. GP1. Ready? 
x cubed plus 2x minus x minus 2 equals y. I would like you guys to do step 1a. Do step 1a, go. Step 1a. Annie, when I'm factoring, what do I always try to do first? Not sure. Let's try Paris. What do we always do first when we factor Annie? Or Annie, Paris, sorry. You see if there's a GCF. No. Michael's not here to do it. Kiara. Great person to ask. Is there a GCF? There's no GCF. Alicia, since there's no GCF, what method do I use now to factor? You use the box method. So we're going to put x cubed here. We're going to put negative 2 here. We're going to put 2x squared here and minus x here. Oh, I did that wrong. Shh, guys, there's a lot of side conversations, but not everybody's got it as well as you. So let's keep it down. John, Alicia, Kendall, Javier. Shh. Let's be quiet. Let's be quiet. I want quiet so people that didn't get there's quite a few people that didn't get this. So I want to make sure they're getting it. So, oh, we're back to talking. We're back to talking. All right, here we go. So, here these have in common an x squared. Here, nothing, but they are both negative. And when they have nothing in common, we at least take out a one. Here we take out an x. Here we take out a two. And so this is now x squared minus one times x plus two equals y, but we're still not done factoring, believe it or not. Um, Hannah, you don't know what to do? You sure? Okay, go ahead, Danielle. What, what is that? It's called a difference of squares. Okay, so what's this going to be? Okay, now just to help us with a step that's coming up a little bit later, what's my power out here? Are any of these repeated, or are they all different? Okay, now if they're ever repeated, you're going to put them together and put a square, right? Yes. Okay, so keep that in mind. Okay, so I think you guys are ready for the step 1B. Go ahead and do step 1B now. That was 1A. That's the worst step. I'll give you just a second. Get your roots. Go ahead. I'm talking to Nelson. Nelson? Okay. Now I want you guys to do step two. Do step two, please. Step two? Yeah. Okay. Here we go. So you guys should have done this. We had a one root. And we had a negative one root and a negative two root. So you should have three dots on your x-axis. Okay, next question. Um, I want you guys to decide, are these roots, is my line going to go through these roots or bounce off of them? You have to look at each one separately. Um, so maybe, maybe let's, 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 let's take a look. Let me let me let me catch up. Let me have everybody with me on this one. This one, this is kind of like the the new idea for you guys. All of those are one. All right, Adrian Hernandez. Let's start with x equals one, right? Positive one. That came from here. When I look at this power, will it bounce off of the x-axis or will it go through? It's gonna go through. All right. How about John Chavez for this root? That came from this factor. That's an odd power. Through or bounce? Through. A lot of times it's going to be through. All right. Adrian Canizales, what about the last one? Through again. This, this root comes from this factor, and it still has an odd power. The only time you're ever going to have an even power, you guys, is if you end up having the same factor twice. So you put it together as a square. Okay, that's the only time it's going to happen. So these are all through. So just so we know what to do when we're drawing our line, we're going to have, I'm going to put a T here, just so we know that when we draw our line, it goes through. All right, now I want you guys to do step three, four? Four. We're on four. 
Do step four. We're all going to put a dot at negative two. Now, guys, here's your challenge. This is your last step. I want you to draw a line. And where do you start at? Start here, okay? And you're going to draw a line that goes through this dot, through this dot, and through this dot. One, one smooth line. See if you can do it. Ready? No. Thank you, though. I, I want to do it. So we start here, right? Start here. We go through. And now this one's tricky. It goes through. It needs to come back down. To go uh -huh, yeah, I, I, that what I, said. Uh -huh. I don't know what you said. But I got that. All right. Because it only makes one school where you have an understanding.